What's up legends? Welcome back to another video. I met a subscriber last week, not that long ago. We were talking about cars and he mentioned a car that he had which really interested me because I basically ordered this two years ago. So I ordered a Cayman GT4 two, three years ago with Porsche in Geneva and ended up cancelling it for the Scuderia. And when I ordered that, the Cayman, I was really hesitating with the 718 Boxster, well, not Boxster, just 718 Spider. That's something which you were telling me earlier. This is Clark, right here, that I met a few days ago, who is very kindly lending me his 718 Spider. And I've been wanting to drive one of these ever since I canceled my order. And this spec that you've got, Clark, is pretty special. How long have you had this car for now? Uh, I have this car for, one year and a half. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 18 months. Uh, happy with it? Very, very, very happy. Good. That's, That's the most important car. thing. As long as you're happy with it. I mean, the spec that you've done is incredible. It's Jensen Blue, right? Jensen Blue, yes. Like the flower. flower okay. Jensen. Okay, I see, I see. And it's a fairly, sorry for the noises coming by, um, but this is one of the only spots we could find where we could stop. Uh, it's tricky around here. But yeah, very nice, rare color. New color. Yes. It's like a dark blue, but it kind of changes depending on the angle that you're at. Um, and the box, well, 718 spider. It, I need to get out of saying boxes. I'm used to saying boxer spider because no. of the last generations. But this is completely different. This is literally a Cayman GT4 convertible, effectively, because previous generations, they kind of just stuffed the Carrera engine in the back of a Boxster or Boxster GTS, whereas now it's a completely revisited car with the front end from a GT3, basically just a GT4 without a roof, which is why these have been doing so well. But for some reason, they're so much less popular than the coupe versions. But I think they're pretty awesome. This one, so in this gorgeous blue, it's then got the magnesium finished wheels with the red calipers. Really, really cool looking. We got the wing up right now. You can press a button to put that up and it just looks fantastic. Now you do have a roof, um, but it's a little bit complicated. So on this one, you've got a really nice um, option, which is the body painted key. Can I give you that to take it out? Yeah, Sorry. it'll probably be easier. So look, there you go. Look at that. And you have two boots. So you have a boot in the back and a boot in the front. And the boot in the back hides the roof. So if you just open the rear boot, that would be fantastic. So there you go, even with the wing up, that will come up open. You got the car cover and then you got the roof right here, which is manual so you lift this up so you need to be two people basically to do this so you lift it up on each side bosh that pops up right there you then clip so there's a little button hidden and then you clip basically these little latches onto the back right here and then i'll show you the final step so i need to just find the button i remember doing this on the last one yeah sometimes oh there you go got it and then it just clips in normally. There you go. So that's clipped in. And then the final process, if you go on the other side, I'll watch you put this all together. Final process is electric, just to clip in the roof. Normally, let's say, we had to uh, uh, push this button. Oh, this okay. Button before uh, this uh, first step. Oh, and I see. Next step, last step, step. And we can't do it without pulling this button. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, got you. Well, normally what you do is you then press the button here and then that will come down electrically and close the roof once and for all. Pretty simple system. It is a manual roof, but that means that you save weight and that's kind of what this is all about, this car. It's about being a lighter, more thrilling version of this 718 platform. Shall we go for a drive? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. I need the key. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's going to be convenient. So it's no keyless on this one? No, no. There we go, little startup. So it makes less noise than a few other previous generations just Sport because. Exhaust. Uh, yeah. Sport exhaust because of the new regulations that you need to have. So I've put the auto blip on, I've put the sport suspension on, the sports exhaust on, and the wing. So we've kind of gone all in. Okay, here we go. First gear. It's got a proper Porsche noise, hasn't it? And then now, auto blip. Oh yeah, I mean it does make less noise than the previous generation, but every car does now. That's just the way it is. You don't have much uh, 
much choice when it comes to that, but as soon as you get into it, feels familiar, feels like a Porsche GT product. The front end is poised, the front end is giving you confidence as soon as you hop in. The steering is pointing you right where you want to be before you even know that you want to be there. The gearbox, super short throw gear lever. Obviously this is a manual and for about the last year or so they've been producing it in PDK as well. Yes. Um, which is nice and they're selling really well the Cayman GT4 PDKs. They're actually reselling for more than their list price in the UK. But the manual with the auto blip is something else. The clutch is really easy. And it just feels familiar. It feels like and it is a real Porsche GT product and that's yes. what's so cool I mean the one particularity you got with this from having just driven it up here as well is it's got really long gearing so you know you can stay in it's first really gear cool. oh sounds good there leave it in bottom, first bottom. gear bottom. and as soon as it's a bit slow you're basically in first but you could drive on most twisty roads and just leave it in first or second Basically, yes. yeah, that's yeah. kind of what you're driving it in. So, yeah, revs all the way up to about 8,000, and you got 420 horsepower. We're gonna turn around right here. Not particularly low. There's no lift on this one, right? No front no, end no, lift. No, no, no lift. You have to be careful. Yeah, but at least it's not a big carbon splitter. Yeah, yeah but it's still Porsche, so you probably still don't want to hit it because they probably still put quite a big price tag on it. But listen to this. such a nice noise but you see what I mean I mean I'm in second and then that's it you're gonna leave it in second so I mean I guess it's good you're not working too much but it takes some getting used to you need to kind of readjust yourself to going up and down in the gears but so poised I mean mid-engine so this could arguably be the best starting point of a platform that Porsche worked on six cylinder rather than four at first there were rumors that this would be four cylinders but we're on the flat six platform, which is really nice of these. Yes, it's the Toria is pre-order. Yeah, exactly. It, it gives that character, it gives you that familiar noise. Obviously, the interior feels familiar. It's similar to, you know, basically all Porsches of this generation. You've just got the three um, little circles in front of you on the dashboard rather than five, which you'll find in a, in a 911. The visibility is really good. The car is quite small compared to others. it's not tiny yet it's narrow um, it's not too long so it's easy to kind of put it where you want it to be and as a back road country road or oh, mountain sure, road sure, cruncher sure. Whew, I mean this is unbelievable and you can make these sound amazing so there are some aftermarket exhausts for these cars for mainly Cayman GT4s you see a lot but it's the same car basically and you realize that once you uh, you start tickling them a little bit, they'll they'll give you plenty of noise in return. But yeah, you've all the only thing you've changed on this is a PPF, right? You've yes, done only, the only yeah, paint cover, protection. Covering the body. Yeah, I mean it is a fantastic feeling car. I mean it's it kind of just feels like a convertible GT4, which is what it is. I mean so poised compared to the last generation, it just feels a little bit more kind of adult-like and put together. I mean, obviously there's more power, there's more acceleration, a bit less noise, yes, maybe, but that can be changed. But everything, so the clutch feels just a bit more linear. Um, the brake pedal is so linear, there's no sudden bite. Um, you still have that similar character in terms of the long gearing and having to rev it out. That's an easy car. Yeah, it's very easy to drive. You sit, you drive, you pilot this car. Yeah. Uh, there is no possibility to to be uh, losing fighting. control yes. fighting the car yeah, it's got a lot of grip we, what tires are we on here we're on michelin's right Michelin uh super curb two. Oh wow oh, okay yeah yeah so loads of grip loads of grip and you know often with these mid-engine cars the front end can maybe feel a bit floaty but it doesn't feel like that at all i mean you know we're not on track so obviously not feeling it in its kind of purest form but just from driving on these little roads and these are the roads where I grew up so I've driven these roads in a lot of different cars and there's a lot where when you're coming into like braking like this downhill into a hairpin where the front end right around that point 
can get a little bit floaty and this feels really poised really yeah just confidence inducing it's such a pleasant car to drive and it's exactly just kind of what you'd hope it would be because you know it's going to be good i mean it's a porsche gt product i don't think they've ever made a bad car to be sure. honest so you know it's going to be good but you just hope you're like is it going to have enough power you know is the noise going to be missing but no it, i mean yes for sure it'd be nice if it made a bit more noise but it still feels raw you've still got the vibrations coming through the pedals coming through the coming through the gear lever just the right amount of vibrations coming through the steering wheel the steering is you know maybe not as communicative as back in the day but it manages to find that balance just right in terms of it being a modern car it pointing you in the right direction and also giving you enough feel to know what's going on in the front to know what's going on in the back and realistically when you're on a road like this you're never really going to get close to unlocking the front or the back and you were saying that with previous cars you enjoyed sliding but with this one it's basically impossible because there's so much grip it's impossible yeah i mean that's saying a lot because on these roads a lot of cars it doesn't take i mean the scud for example it does not take much before that rear end is saying hello very quickly whereas i can feel in this that you would need to be going for it and basically asking for it before the rear end stepped out on you it's really really pleasant to drive and i had my my order and obviously i cancelled that for the scud and I mean, I'm, I'm you, so happy that I had the Scud. You went I, right. That's a marvelous car. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a different ethos. It's a different car. It's a different generation. But I was worried they would produce a lot of these. You know, they've produced a fair amount, but they're still holding their value really well. I mean, especially with a spec like your one, you've done well with this. And, sure. you know, maybe there'll be an RS version that will come at some point. We don't really know, right? For the Cayman GT4, yes. Yeah, but do you think they'll make a Spider no, RS? No, 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 no. This I don't uh, think so. It's only a road legal car. This one. Yeah. The GC4 RS uh, would spend much more time on the tracks yeah. than uh, here on the roads. Yeah, because on the road you don't feel any difference in rigidity. You know, the fact that it doesn't have a roof, you know, you back in the day used to mean differences in rigidity, but now with these modern cars, it doesn't really change much. I mean, it's definitely a Porsche GT which means you feel like you're riding a skateboard we've got it in sports suspension as well so it's firm it's very firm and but I mean that's good because it will communicate a lot with you through that you've got the comfort seats as well which is nice on back these back one yeah uh, that's very good for the back yeah 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 well this you can do you know, a lot of distances do you drive this car a lot uh, yes, but only for small distances. Okay. Only uh, at Monton and around. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you're staying in the area. Yes, yes. Yeah, you're not going to drive too, too far. Well, the, the 718 inspired by 918 seats are very cool looking as well, but these are just so kind. They're the same seats I've got in the turbo, and they're so comfortable. They're so good. Yes, but I tried this one on the Spider on the track of Le Mans, and I could. Uh, find the bucket seat yeah. uh, more rigid, more uh, you drive really uh, a track car with, yes. it, with it, and that's it lacks this uh, bucket seat here for me. Oh yeah, so you would yes. you would go back and you would spec it with the sure, bucket seat. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay, interesting. How much does it add to the experience of a Cayman GT? I haven't driven this generation Cayman, but for me, if you're living in somewhere with sunny weather unless you're taking it to the track every other day, it makes so much more sense for the drama that it adds mm. to have this roof removed and endless headspace compared to the Cayman. Yes. Um, I know I ordered the Cayman, but I did that slightly because of thinking that was a safer market, the Caymans, than the Spiders and a more predictable oh, that's market. That's true. That's true. But in the end, these are maybe a bit more rare Oh, in yeah. the end, yeah, 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 holding their value pretty well. So I think it's a really interesting car. It's everything I'd hoped, you know, and it's everything you'd expect it to be sure, realistically. Sure. But uh, no, thank you so much for letting me drive it. I mean, again, another You're quick welcome. first impression drive with me. Clark, thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoy doing these. If you guys are in the area and have any cars that you would uh, like to feature on the channel as well, 
it's so fun just going up for a quick little drive in the hills I really enjoy it so thanks for watching as always subscribe if you aren't already and we'll see each other again very soon bye bye